Good morning and welcome to Bricolage with Pink Girly. I'm Pink Girly. My name is Lori. And it's a very gray Thursday here in South Jersey. And of course, as usual, just when I'm getting ready to stream, I got coughing, so I'm sucking on a peppermint. So I apologize. <clears throat> but I noticed that this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, Mary from the Mary LTA was not on. And so I popped on early because I've got some tracing to do. I'm going to attempt to draw this and paint this rooster in my, good morning, Becky. Good morning, Leah. In my one art journal. And so I've got a calendar. I purchased a couple calendars, really mostly for collage work. And it was kind of between these two. I'm going to go with the green and yellow because I just really like this one. So <clears throat> I think he's kind of big. Hey, I thought I might see you, Colleen. I know you like roosters and birds. Good morning. It's nice to see you. So this is a Lang um, calendar that I took apart. And the drawings are by Susan Winget. Winget? Oh my gosh. Ambex already been to the post office to drop off to the grocery store. And it looks like it's going to rain. Yeah, it looks like it's going to rain here too. Hi, Candy. Good morning. So I'm pulling from my experience as a <clears throat> primitive toll painting kind of background. And I'm going to do the same process that I would do. Good morning, Kathy. That I um, would normally do if I was painting on wood. So I just have a piece of tracing paper. And I'm going to be using my ink tense watercolor paints and hopefully putting a wash of some kind down on this rooster and then ultimately using color pencil. At least that's the plan. <clears throat> I'm really not a color watercolor person. I mostly have uh, worked in my craft painting days with um, acrylic paint, but I'm going to give this a try. So I'm taking a little bit of washi tape and I'm just going to secure my tissue paper. And if you don't have, a, I have a roll of this, but if you don't have a roll of tissue paper or a tablet, and you wanted to do something like this, really all you need to do is just get a piece of something that you can see through that you can draw on. So you really could, I think, use, you might have to be careful because it's, it would be a little more delicate, but like uh, tissue paper that you would wrap a gift in. Good morning, Gail. Yeah, I came on a little early because I have a lot to do. This is unusual, but Mary wasn't on this morning. So I thought I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm doing this. I might as well pop on and see if anybody is, is awake and ready to roll. Okay, Gail. Thanks for popping in. So I'm going to try to put in a, a little bit more detail than I might if I were painting this on wood. Because I want to be able to use my color pencil. And of course, my watercolor paint. Hey, good morning, Dawn. Is um, transparent. So I'll be able to see my lines. Now, what I don't know is um, what I use to then trace this onto my art journal. I think you pronounce it. Oh, Candy probably would know. Cyril. It's a graphite uh, tracing paper. You know how years ago we had copy paper and it had that blue ink? You don't want that. This is graphite. It'll, if I don't press too hard, I'll be able to erase a little bit of it. 
but I don't want to be too heavy handed. So all, and anybody can do this. You can use a calendar. You can use a color book page. You can copy something off of the internet. I was going to try to draw this free handed, but I didn't know about size and proportions and sitting here with an audience, you know, that can be a little daunting for someone like me. And this is perfectly okay to do this. My rooster will not look like this. Yeah, this isn't called, this isn't carbon paper. Years ago, we had carbon paper, you know, like if you worked in an office, but that would leave a film and you can't, there, yeah, Candy's got it. That's how you spell it. I'm not sure I'm saying it right. It comes in at, I know it comes in black and it comes in white. I don't know if it comes in other colors. It may come in a blue. I'm not sure. And um, it's folded like tissue paper wrap. And you get a ton of it. But see, I would go ahead and um, if I wasn't going to draw something and I wanted to uh, see, I always liked this gal by the name of Maxine Thomas. Excuse me, that was my breakfast. I do apologize. Maxine Thomas was a primitive um country artist I guess you would say and had really cute stuff that I used to paint on wood in fact I went out to Lancaster Pennsylvania to Steph's art shop oh my gosh I don't know how many years ago stayed overnight with uh folks that we used to call aunt and uncle my mom went with me and I went and uh, participated in a weekend class given by Maxine Thomas. She autographed one of my books. And that was a really, that was a thrill for me. Yeah, this is a cute rooster. I've got the whole calendar. Calendars.com had some things on sale. And some things were really like three or four dollars. So I got some calendars and I couldn't resist this calendar of roosters. So I don't know how much I'll be able to get done. I don't really know how this is going to go. Haven't tried this. <clears throat> and I certainly haven't done this in a long, long time. Oh, really? Candy said the tracing, the um, graphite paper comes in blue, red, and also yellow. And then you can get a white and black. I think they call it black. And I'm just going to mark in here. Now, some of you may or may not know, I've been, I joined an online academy that is headed up by a gal by the name of Bonnie Snowden. Bonnie is located in the UK. She lives in North Yorkshire. And she's a color pencil artist. And she has tons of tutorials. Of course, I haven't done any birds yet, but I did take a peek this morning. And... Um, just had a quick little look at how she does some feathers. Now, this is all blotchy down here, and I'm going to certainly use my calendar as a reference. So let me just say good morning to everyone who's coming in. I know I'm on early, but I thought if I'm going to sit here and trace this rather than explain to you all what I'm doing, I'll just... I'll just do it. And if anybody could pop in, they can pop in. <clears throat> now, I want to make sure I'm marking spots where I've got some of these leaves. Uh, leaves. <laughs> Feathers. I hope everyone is doing well this Thursday morning. 
it sure does look like we're going to get some rain here. Now I'm just using a little mechanical, you know, cheap little mechanical pencil. I'm just trying to give myself an idea where some of these feathers end and start. My plan is really to do a lot of the work uh, with my color pencils. And I have Prismacolor. I have a few other pencils that I've purchased um, for my work with the uh, Bonnie Snowden Academy. But I hoard those. They are a little more expensive. And some of those are Pablo's, Luminance, and polychromos and bonnie a lot of times works on um, either drafting film or pastel mat which both surfaces are new to me because she likes the way the pencil reacts to those surfaces and you can work with the pencils and get some you know movement that you normally wouldn't get on a, a flat surface So I kind of am used to um, the Prismacolors, for one, and two, they're a little more reasonably priced, and three, I have a ton of them, and I'm stingy with my other ones. All right, so once you feel, if you're going to do something like this, once you feel like you've gotten everything down that you want... Some of these feathers here in this tail are a little hard to see because it's a dark green. And I'm not sure about my greens and mixing colors and all that jazz. Let me, let me show you the rest of the calendar. Let me put that up there. Let me show you. I took it all apart because, like I said, I want to use it for collage mostly. Where did I put it? All right. So I don't know what month is what, but here is, oh, I have a little bit of a glare. Here's another guy. He was a runner up this morning. Let me put this, I can't see my screen if I lay stuff on my. Now, years ago, we used to, we used to my husband, and my sister's, we used to purchase these calendars put out by Lang. And then my husband built a wooden, hey, good morning, Brenda, frame that we could hang on our wall and then open the calendar totally up and slip it in. But they have beautiful designs. And, of course, the artwork is by Susan Wingett. So this is their 2003 rooster calendar. And like I said, I have it all torn apart. So here's another guy. And the backgrounds are so cool too, right? English roses. Good morning, Judy. <laughs> She's giving us the rooster call. <laughs> so there you got your sunflowers. They call them mellow yellow. He's got a bit of fluff there. I was going to look up. Oh, I love that word winter berry. Doesn't that look cool there? Bird life. I was going to look up how a real chicken's eye look. I didn't do that. I might do that when I get to the eye. And we've got a little bit of kind of a purpley blue tail feather. Charlotte Nursery. Just beautiful images, right? Of course, they're very large, so I'm really not sure how this is going to look on my page. He's going to take up most of my page. There's that guy. Dawn said she had six wives, no rooster. I only wanted eggs, no chicks. 
No chicks, baby. See, this one would be hard for me, I think, because it's all dark. You really got to get your, same with the white, you really got to get your values in there. So that's it. That's it. That are the, the roosters that come with this proud rooster line. Whoop, there goes a paintbrush. No, oh, I'm going to put these back. Except for the guy that I'm going to work on because I need him as a reference. Now that's going to be kind of fiddly for me to have a spot. Oops, sorry. Big calendar. Whack the, whack the camera. So if anybody has any questions as we're muddling through this project, Please put it in caps for me. I would appreciate that very much. Now I've got to find my brush. Oh dear. Guess I'm going to have to get a different brush. Oh, I hope I didn't tip it in the bin. It did. It went right in the trash can. Oh my gosh. I couldn't do that again if I tried. All right. So today I'm going to work in my large uh, I just call it an art journal I think it was a uh, I don't know it's, it doesn't have any markings on it I took it out of the wrapper and I don't remember what, which one it is what it is it's got the little pocket some of you might know it's got a little pocket in the front it's like a Diane Reevely or something or let me see what I want to I want to get some place. He's really going to be quite large. And his tails are going. His tails going to go over, going over to the other side. Judy said her mom raised chickens when she was three. I was assigned the chair. The chore of gathering eggs. See, that's scary to me. In a basket and taking them to the kitchen at 6 a.m. Been an early riser ever since. I would be afraid of them pecking me. Like when you went to get the eggs. I would be afraid of being pecked. Oh, look, I forgot to put his eye in. That's silly. Isn't that just silly? I can just do that real quick because it's easier making trees in a circle than making your own circle. Circle in a circle. Now the downside of doing it this way. A peck is nothing being spur. Oh, I didn't even think about that, Becky. Oh. Yeah, because I would think they'd be protective, right, of, of their eggs. All right. I thought I had everything rearranged enough where I'd have enough room to spread out here. Well, this might be a little fiddly, but I'm going to go ahead and try to do it with him. Good morning, Marty. I'm going to try to do this with him. Uh, mm -hmm. I might be able to get him on one side. And of course, I'd much rather work on this side of the book. Uh, see, I'm thinking how I want to lay it out to make it look like, you know, a nice spread. If there's a, another page that's maybe not as, uh, like, opens up a little, a little better. Opens up more. Oh, yes, the center. Let's do the center. Hey, Raul, how are you? Nice to see you. I guess you're back home and in uh, your regular routine. 
All right, so I can get his chest in there. Tail feathers. Okay, let's do this. So now I'm just pushing down my washi tape again. And oh, I hit something. Here we go. Dawn says she was more timid with the guinea hens. Were they a little, like, were they in the here? Okay, so I don't need this much of this, so I'm going to cut this. And this is a graphite uh, transfer paper. Is that what they call it, candy? They don't call it copy paper, I know that. See, I take everything out of the package. I, I don't know why. Now, one thing I will tell you, if you um, are doing this, you don't want to press terribly hard, especially if your graphite paper is new. And you can use a pencil and retrace everything that you know. I know you guys probably can't see this very well retrace the lines that you just you know put on your tissue paper but if you do it with a pencil you might have a hard time finding where you are and if you do it with a stylus which you certainly can do you're not going to have any marking at all to show where you're going um so if that makes you nervous or crazy use a colored pencil or pen. Becky said her mom used to have guinea hens. They make amazing guards. They are better than dogs. In unison, they are quite loud. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. So, all I'm going to do is retrace everything that I have put down earlier and I'm going to hopefully I think I made my eye too small not press too terribly hard because I don't really want my outside lines to show when I'm finished so I'm using a fairly light touch and then of course you can peek to make sure you are tracing and of course I can go a lot lighter but see, with using this pen, it's giving me some color on my tracing. I know where I am and what I have and haven't uh, traced. Good morning, Kathleen. So. I have a box where I have a lot of my tracings from years ago. I save them all. You never know when you want to redo something. Now I didn't quite have enough of my graphite paper down here to get his foot. So I'm going to move that down once I get all this done. Oh, yeah. I think my daughter and my son-in-law should get them. So I'm just making little guidelines here where I can put some feathers. Some people complain about anything, though. You know? Gosh, my, my stomach is making a lot of noise this morning. I hope you didn't hear that. Of course, as soon as I hit the live button, my husband was sneezing. He's got a pretty good... It's got a pretty hefty sneeze. 
Hefty, hefty, hefty. My sister Nancy. Well, I like roosters too, but my sister Nancy's always. Roosters have been a favorite of hers. There's Teresa. Good morning, Teresa. Hi, Pam. Still getting storms. Does that affect your headaches, Teresa? Do you have another headache that would sometimes affect our daughter? I probably could have taken um, a paper towel and taken some of this graphite off. But you can use this on wood. I'm not sure about glass. You might be able to. And you should be able to erase it. Now, I've used it for my... Um, oh, I don't think I wanted that line, maybe. For my color pencil work and sometimes that's a little, it's a little hard to erase now i'm just going to slide it down a little bit get his other foot so i've got clean water i've got a watercolor brush i've got my ink pen Oh, the colored ones? Okay, because they're made of a different... Okay, that makes sense. Thanks, Candy. See, I still missed a spot. All right, so there he is. Mm -hmm. You're probably really not going to see much of this until after I get started. Let me just tilt this up and see if you can see. So I just have a light tracing of him in there. I'm not sure I got all of his foot in either, but we'll we'll deal with that. So I have paper toweling, a lot of paper toweling, and uh, where's my other little brush? So I'm going to just start blocking in some color. And I'm going to use, this is my reference. I'm going to start with my yellow first. So I'm going to just block in some light yellow as a background. And I'm hoping that um, I can do all my detail work with my color pencils. Um, you know, from what I understand from watching other folks this, this should work this should work okay so here we go this is going to be a bright yellow but like i said i'm going to hopefully becky said the older i get the more i understand why roosters start their day off by screaming all right, so I've got a little bit of yellow up in here. And it comes down around his face. And down around this way. Now, if there's something you need for me to say, make sure you put it in caps. Because I'm kind of kind of be paying attention to this. And uh, let's see. Got some yellow down in here. Just trying to pick up some spots where there's some bright yellow. And I've got some bright yellow over in here. And I have a goldish kind of yellow color. So I want to mix some of that in. That might be a little dark. I keep, I'm very heavy handed with my watercolor. So I'm used to that acrylic paint, you know. So 
let's just skip. And this is just, you know, a um like it's not watercolor paper. It's just like like I don't even think it's like a mixed media color uh, paper. It's just paper. I wonder if I can if I prop this up a little bit, maybe let's see if I can prop this up a little bit. It might be eliminate some of the some of the glare. Over here it's a little darker. I'm just picking up some different colors off of my um, intense palette thingy. Hey Kimberly, good morning. Now his chest is green. So I don't want to get in there. I don't even know how my color pencil is going to react on this paper. I guess I should have checked that out. Hey, Shaz. Good morning. Okay, it's a little darker over in here. Get some darkness down in here. And they're bird feathers, so really, I can wing it. But um, bum Okay. I'll try not to do too much of that. And then I'm going to have to use my heat gun because I want it to dry very well so I can put my color pencil on it. It's a little darker back in here. Down in here, it's a dark green. And I've got green in here. And this is the darker, yellowy, golden, brown-ish semi-color. There's a little white spot. It's a little too dark. <laughs> and I've got his legs, or this color. Now, you probably can't really see me doing his feet and his legs, but I don't know that you really need to see that at this point. Just blocking in some color. Some color, color, color. And we got a couple little dark spots here. I can do that. I'm hoping with the pencil. All right. Now, green. This could be tricky. Well, that's a nice green, I think. Ooh. Okay. So, let me put in a little bit of. Oh, that's really bright. I'm just trying, uh, testing out some of these colors here. Mm, that one's not too bad. I do have some white. Let me see if I can lighten up maybe the screen. That might be, not be too bad. Oh, Raul. All right, just don't be screaming out loud. I don't want you to knock me off my chair. All right, let's catch the uh, top of some of these. That's really dark.
My detail is going to come in with a color pencil. I hope. I hope. I hope. I hope. And she's off with her crazy singing. All right, so I want this to be lighter. This is almost like um a whitewash kind of there. I'm just going to put this light, lighter green all in here. I just kind of muddied up my white. So I was trying to decide what I wanted to do this morning. And I really came down to whether I felt like, you know, embarrassing myself. So I decided to go for it. <laughs> so, so we'll see. We'll see. Okay, I want to leave that white. This dark in here. I could just say he's, um, you know, like abstractish. If it doesn't turn out well. All right, let's put some of this lighter green here. It's got a little bit of yellow in it. Uh, sometimes it, I get lost in the um, in the picture, you know, in the 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 uh, reference picture that I'm following. I have some issues with that. Of course, the feathers underneath are all darker. I'm not sure I'm going to like that color. Ooh, that's a nice color, though. Let's mix some of that in. Now, I'm using the ink tent, so once it dries, I'm stuck with whatever I put down. Uh, colors are a little off from the sample, but... It's my picture, right? I can do what I want. Oh, that, that combo looks nice. This should probably be a little lighter. Now, Bonnie Snowden, my teacher in the academy, says when you're doing fur, and I assume feathers would be the same way, you want to do your initial lay down of color, and I would think that means uh, watercolor as well. You want it to go in the same direction as your, as the feathers or the fur is going. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, bum, bum, bum. that one's lighter. This is dark here. And good morning, Mitzi. What's everybody up to today? I think I may need a nap. I was up earlier than I planned to be. Let's get some dark in here. Pull this down this way. Who have I missed? Did I miss anyone? I hope not. Welcome to everyone who's come in.
All right, so this, oh, this feather's really dark. This one under here. The picture, um, the calendar picture looks more, um, his, his leaves look more of a blue green. And I'm using more of a uh, yellow green. I've got yellow in his body there. Let's see. Hey, Roberta, good morning. So this feather's coming around this way. And let's see, this is a feather in here. And I've got this guy coming in. Hmm, I think I missed a line there. I've got a feather in there. You love roosters? There's a few of us here. Devin! <laughs> Good morning, Devin. All right, so. We'll see how this. Uh, I should be able to darken up some of this with my color pencil. Let's see. And then I'll do something to the background. I was thinking maybe stencil or something like that, but that's might not be today, at least not on stream. This is quite an undertaking for me. All right, so then I want to get some of this dark green in here. He's got some dark green uh, under here and then little patches. So I want to get that in with the um, with the watercolor. So let's see. There's a spot in here. It's dark. But just with the color pencil, that'll give me a head a head start, I think. And let's see this dark area here. And I got to remember where I put my phone. I just heard my phone go. Mm. Oh, there it is. I just need to keep an eye. I got to check that out. There's so much going on with my mom these days. I need to keep an eye. Okay, let's see. This part here, I think, is dark. Um. Get a little bit of dark up in here. Don't forget, if you have any questions, if I can ask, answer them for you, put them in caps for me, okay? Devin, if you had a question for me, I didn't catch it. And then it's just kind of patchy here. And then I do want to look up a chicken eye. A chicken eye, chicken eye, chicken eye. And then I need to get the red in. Oh, I didn't do the beak. I just want to tell my sisters. Uh, 
that I'm streaming. We're thinking about letting the uh, healthcare worker come by herself tomorrow. Mom's met her and all that stuff, and she's she's been behaving, so that's good. But it is a little, it's nerve wracking. But um, the gal that's uh, working with us right now is really good. All right, so let me put in a little bit of this darker yellow for his beak. And let's see what this red looks like. Sir. This red's really, 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 really. Well, like, you know what? That might just be good. So let's get that in. Now, the reason I decided to do the watercolor is that it's a big project. And to really color it with colored pencil. And do a good job. It's a big undertaking for a stream. So I thought I would try this. Um, Dee Dee Willingham, if you're not familiar with her, you need to check out her channel. She um, uses watercolor lots of times in her art. And her coloring books and then comes back in as does Kathy Arbor with um, color pencil. Now I've done it in the coloring book. Just trying to deepen that a little bit there. My husband and I, last week when we were headed over to my mom's, we there's a lot of farm around farming around where we are, a lot of farms, open space. And um, we saw a flock of white birds at first. We thought they were seagulls. So when we slowed down to look, they didn't have any gray on them at all. And, um, oh, that spot there should have been white. Okay. And um, they had a little bit of a neck. They weren't a big bird. We'd never seen anything like them before. And there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. So we were, of course, online trying to figure out what they were. And someone had posted, my husband keeps tabs on this neighborhood site. And somebody from Reading said, does anybody know what the flock of white birds are? Brenda asks, does anyone have Tim Holtz's woodless watercolor pencils? I've got three tins of them for Christmas, still untouched. Um, I think maybe Colleen might have them. No, they weren't egrets. They didn't have big, long legs. They were they look like a little, like a pigeon, kind of, but a long neck. Snow geese. Snow geese from Canada. They're here wintering. There's Gail. Hi, Gail. Welcome back. All right, I'm going to put a little touch of white just in there. All right, so I'm going to look up a chicken eyeball. And Colleen said, Brenda, his watercolor pencils are wonderful. They're gooses. Yeah. You know, at first, uh, we it looked like maybe they were swans, but they didn't have that kind of a neck. And they're, they're not big like a Canadian geese, like the Canadian geese. They're, they were, their bodies were only like maybe about that big, the body part. 
you know, and the neck was maybe about that long. We, I saw white birds online, but the neck, the, there was no neck. The head was, you know, right on the body, like a, like a normal bird. So snow geese, I've never seen them. We had never seen them before and we're old. Just ask my daughter. She'll tell you. Ah, <sighs> kids. All right. When's the last time you Googled chicken eye? Going to look up me a chicken eye. Ooh. Now, I didn't put any color in the chicken eyes. You might have noticed. Let's get me some images. I guess I should put rooster. Not chicken. Although it looks like rooster as it came up, but rooster eye. Wow, his look really. Oh, it's a lovely gold color. This one looks cool. Look at that eye, huh? Very cool. It's got some dark orange. Okay. I haven't pulled out any pencils. So I'm going to pull out my pencil case of Prismas. And if I don't find what I'm looking for, I'll go to the big tin. And then if I have to, I'll go get my... Um... All right. So I definitely want... There's a sunburst. Now, where am I going to put these? Okay, let's let's do this. Let's get the watercolors up and out of the way. That would be brilliant. Totally brill. Totally brill. Okay. Paper towel, that can go over there. Let's see what color greens I might want. A little mossy. Pull out some reds. I'm going to pull out lacquer. Uh, I don't know. Crimson red. Crimson lake. Chartreuse. I like that. Marty said, I need full bottle needling, except I have fibromyalgia, so feel needles most of the time anyway. Oh. Mm. Okay. Not really seeing what I want. Yeah. Pull out that cream that could come in handy. I pull out several greens, but I'm really looking for my um, dark greens, probably good. And grass green, that might be a little too bright. I'm not sure how layering will go on this paper. That's one thing I'm learning with the pastel mat layering of the color you're talking about acupuncture oh that's what you had done yesterday i've always wanted to try that yellow orange all right so didn't, i didn't find much in there did i no i did not these this is my tin of extras that i have out here See if I can find some uh, jasmine is good. I'm looking for this is a I don't know what that is. I'm looking for a goldenrod. Oh my gosh, I just cannot read these. That's 
banished orange. Do 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 do. Crimson Lake. I already pulled that one out. Oh, I do like a dark. I do like the um, dark purple. Tuscan red. That might be helpful. I should have had all these pulled, but I I apologize. But I didn't really know. Oh, I might need that. And some brown. And some orange. Don't tell me I'm going to have to go on a goose chase for my golden rod. No, I don't need that right away. Let's see, what's this one? This is some kind of an orange. That'll work for the eye, I think. I use golden rod quite a bit in my coloring. I think this is, uh, I keep picking up a Spanish orange. And there's some colors I have like a ton of because I hardly use them at all. And one of them is Spanish orange. I think they're coming along very well. Thank you, Gail, for asking. Um, Gail's asking about my color pencil lessons. I just finished up a paw print. And of course, I finished up Bernard. Here's Kathy. I'm making an ice cream cake for my son's birthday. Oh, Kathy, that's so nice. And it sounds positively yummy. Uh, let's see. Where did I put mine? I'm going to show off a little bit here since Gail asked. Let's see. Where's my? Let's go this way. This is my paw print. I don't think it really looks like a paw. That's color pencil. And I'll show you Bernard. If I can find him. She says Bernard. Oh, here's my ear. Human ear. I don't think that looks so great either. <laughs> you can tell it's an ear. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Oh, where's little Bernard? There he is. And there's Bernard. This really looks like my Bella. So I think I'm I'm it's coming along. It's coming along. I'm certainly enjoying it, that's for sure. All right, now where's that rooster eyeball? I'm going to start with the eyeball. Oh, you know what I didn't pull out? I might have to go get my... Um... Oh, thank you, Colleen. I might have to go get mine. I have a, jo a, a mug that sits by my comfy chair where I keep all my... Um... Because I don't have any black or anything out here. Oh, wait a minute. Here might be a black. There's a black. I really wanted my indigo blue. That's another color that I'm just learning to use. And I haven't used much in the past. Okay, we're going to have to let that one go, I think. I don't see any. Oh, thank you, Gail. I have a rabbit in process, and um, I've got to finish him up. And, I, you know, there's certain things you're supposed to be doing before you, like, jump in and do other stuff. I think I'm going to start with the, um, I think I'm going to use a little jasmine. I'm not sure how this paper is going to work.
And he does have a dark ring around that. And I didn't bring out my, you know what? I'm just going to go get my, I'm just going to take a couple of minutes. I'm going to go get my kneadable eraser. I'm going to get my little jug with my other pencil colors in. I'll be right back. I thought I grabbed everything I would need. Okay. I should have taken off some of this graphite before I started. But let's just see. Okay. Now. Come around with that. Now I can bring my little camera down a little further if I need to. I do have an electric pencil sharpener here. My son's buddy was getting rid of a bunch of stuff and he put a uh, electric pencil in the trash and my son said oh I think my mom could use that see my golden rods getting smaller and smaller I don't know if I know what a bell is. It Belgians? Am I saying that right? I don't know if I know. That's a dog, right? Now the catch light, because this is so small, I'm just. I will do that with uh, either paint or. Uh, some kind of a pen. And I really should be have my reader glasses down. This is where I have trouble reading chat. And so I need my glasses my uh, reader glasses to see the little fine the fine work but then my other glasses are to see the computer screen so from this point forward i'm really kind of just going to follow the calendar and just color Oh, horses. <laughs> oh, you're talking horses. Oh, I don't know them either. Boy, you should see some of the folks in this um, Bonnie Student Academy and the horses that these people uh, color on real. I mean, they look like photographs. 
they look like photographs. All right, so I'm going to start with perhaps crimson red, unless I have a poppy here. Oh, Scarlet Lake might be good. I'm going to start putting in some Scarlet Lake. Mm, it's got a little, just a little lighter red right in here. I'm just using a little tiny pressure. This surface is very smooth. And the one thing I haven't seen that I made, there it is. I have come to appreciate my white pencil. I never really used the white pencil too much before. Now it's a little deeper down in here. So I'm just going to add some of this. And a little darker up under the eye. And then I'm going to come in with my next red, which is the crimson. Yeah. Katie was saying she had heard that um, they were going to start stop making the Prisma white, so she bought a bunch of them. But I don't know if I don't know if that's the case. I checked. Um, I checked on Blick, Get Blick, online, and they still have them. So I'm not sure. Of course, none of my supplies work like Didi's do. I just have to say. She has got a knack, a knack, very talented lady. So I'm just kind of following the, um, I don't know, would it be helpful if I try to move the calendar down here for you guys to see what I'm I really could fold him, I think. So I'm just at this point, I'm going to use him for a collage. So it doesn't really matter if he's folded. <laughs> what do you mostly do these days, Gail? Are you stitching? Are you mostly stitching? What is it that you really like to do? I was in Susan Taylor Brown's yesterday, and oh my gosh, she's, if ever you're, if ever get where your neck is not hurting, you'll give it, yeah. Well, Rititi heard that open stock prismas are stopping, so she's, oh, okay, is that it, Chaz? Okay, open stock, okay. So they'll still be in the kits, but you won't be able to get the open stock, got it. All right, so now I'm going to come in here with a little bit of this middle tone red and start darkening up. Now I'm trying to use as light a pressure as I can because I don't want to have any harsh lines. Gail says she enjoys stitching, but you have to wear light and magnify glasses over. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's sneaky of them. It's always something. Okay, so there's definitely a line here in this part of the red flappy thing. That's the technical term, the rooster's red flappy thing. Now this is the Crimson Lake. I'm 
Now, sometimes when I um, I'm doing a string, I feel like I have to rush. But I'm going to try to just take my time. Now, can everybody see okay? I can bring my camera down a little further. It's on a little, a little, um, little neck bendy thing. I, I have the best terms. This is the Tuscan red. When I use red a lot, I like to, um, really use my dark purple, which I don't think I have that sharpened. Oh, I might have a dark purple here sharpened. Would that be swell? Oh, good. What are you working on, Dawn? I enjoyed your little um, sheep. Uh, Dawn was felting a sheep the other day. And he was so cute. I should have pulled out my curly wool to show you, Dawn. My hand is in the way. What coloring this when I go like that? You mean? Okay, I'll try to be careful. I won't. Thanks, Marty. All right, let's see. Let's get this guy sharpened. Now this looks like a dagger. This is the dark purple. I really like to use that for uh, deepening my reds. Oh, it was in a kit. Oh, thanks, Roberta. Roberta has to go. Thanks for popping in. I appreciate it. It was nice to see you. You have a great day. Is my hand in the way of the sample, Marty? Is that what you're saying? Let me move this over. Sometimes I'm not using that side of the... And I have my... Um, a little dish under there trying to give me some support some support all right let's see now when you're going to add black you have to be careful just to do it real lightly but sometimes you just need A little bit of black to make, you know, shadow. He's a good looking rooster, yeah. He's a handsome dude. But you can see where this is not going to get done anytime soon today. You know, I mean, it's just, if I want to take my time, which I do. Sina, Sina, good morning. Brenda said, I have a Blick card press for Lino printing 100 cards, 50, 50 pre-cut pieces. Boy, for five. Whoa, nice. I don't even know what Lino printing is. But just take it easy. Or check with your doc. Check with your doc. Don't do anything, you know, crazy without checking with your doctor. Now, it may sound crazy, but he just looks like he's got a little bit of yellow in his waddle. Is that his waddle? He's got a little bit of yellow up in here. A little bit right in here. A little bit in there. Did I miss Joni? Hi, Joni. If Kellyanne comes in, let me know. I want to show Kellyanne something if she comes in. I want to put this little 
So entering wondering. Yes, I'm wondering, Pam. Oh, I was so tired last night. I saw you come on and I just didn't have it in me. Uh, Pam took her dryer apart. It's working great and it's doing the wet. Pam, you are unbelievably talented. Good job. I probably, I don't know if I have something else to prep up my side of the book. Let me see. Let me see if I can put this with this little box. All. I need one of those wedges, you know, where it kind of keeps your, your book at an angle. Oh, oh. <laughs> thank you, Joni. Okay, I don't know if that's a little better. What's the matter, Zena? Zena, have, Zena, do you have to work today? Oh, no. I miss what she's worried about. Oh. Okay, where am I here? Uh, I think I want a little bit of black. Uh, one thing Bonnie says, as does Dee Dee, contrast is really the ticket. It's the ticket. Now, of course, I can always come back in and refuss, you know. Yeah, I'm supposed to clean the house with girl I work with. She sent me a message at 1030 that she wasn't feeling well. Her door is open and she's not home. Hmm. Hmm. All right, let's get a little bit of this. Um, I'm going to put a little Tuscan red under here. See, I should have a white spot there. I'm calling and texting her. Oh, linoleum printing. I uh, wonder if uh, 911 would go check. Somebody would go check on her. Pam of all trades. All right, I'm just putting a little bit of that dark purple under his eye there. Coming around here with a little bit of dark. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to rest to get somebody over and check on her. Especially since she said she wasn't feeling well, you know? All right, so now I'm gonna go back to my little gray shack, the uh, Scarlet Lake, I think, and start putting some Yeah, my dad always said, if the door's open, don't go in. She already went in. She already went in. All right. 
I want to keep the center of the comb on top a little lighter and brighter if I can. So I'm going to get that. It's in my hand. I'm looking for it. It's in my hand. I'm going to get some white. And put down a little layer of white. Yeah, parts, all that stuff's expensive. And then back in with the Scarlet Lake. I should have done a better job at, see, this is what I always forget. I forget to, before I do anything, I should take some of the color pencil not the color pencil, my tracing um, uh, paper, you know, the graphite or whatever I'm using um, and try to knock that back a little bit so you don't have the lines. Use some bigger strokes here, but very light. Trying to hold my pencil back so you can see what I'm doing. Um, and that's also a, a tip that um, the experts will give you, like Dee Dee and such. If you hold your pencil back, it's hard to get a heavy lay down of color. You know, it help it helps you, especially if you're heavy handed. And I am definitely heavy handed. Is anybody asleep yet? <laughs> All right, let's see. Now there's a little white highlight there. But I will do that with um, like a paint pen or something. I'm going to start with some of this Tuscan. Deepen up a little bit. I don't know what I do with my... Um, Actually, where did I put my, yeah, I really like this um, Crimson Lake. Now, these are Prismacolor Premier Pencils I'm using. For years, of course, as a child, I colored with crayons. And when, when I started to work with colored pencil, I didn't know a thing about them, of course. And I found Prisma, I found color pencils that were uh, Prisma colors. And I didn't understand what everybody was talking about because these were very reasonably priced. Well, what I didn't realize is that I was buying the Scholar Prisma color pencils, which are a nice little pencil. But they're not made for blending. They're made for drawing, which I came to find out. And I could deepen this up here a little bit. So they were really scratching a lot of my um, my surface because the pencil was too hard. So that's when I started to purchase the uh, Premier. Okay, Kath. Kath went back to bed. Wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm right there. I'm right there with the shots. Yep. So my, do my daughter, our daughter, um, went to see her GYN. And it wasn't her regular. She had to get in to see someone. And um, I just assumed it was a young, a young doctor. So I said, so what was the doctor like? And she said, oh, she was very nice. She said, but not what I expected. White hair, really old been practicing for years and years and years I said oh yeah I said about how old of a gal she said oh she was a really old mom she's like 72 I'm like okay I'm not going to take offense to that and she's like I'm sorry mom I keep forgetting how old you are I'm I will be 70 this year <laughs> and I don't have gray hair or white hair I would like to have white hair but I don't I take after my dad in that way. My dad, on the day he died, still had most of his natural hair color, had very little gray. All right, so now I'm coming in with just a little bit more pressure. Next month, candy. Mine's not till summer, so I have a have a little bit of a weight but i just you know i just i really can't i really can't believe, i really can't believe it okay i just i just can't believe it all right now at this point if i were by myself i'd be flipping this puppy Yeah, right, Candy? Me too. I have a little bit when my hair's pulled back. My mother has beautiful white hair. My sister Nancy goes every three weeks to get hers treated so she's not white. She would be totally white. I'm like, oh my gosh, let it go natural. Can you guys see that? It's a slow process, but <laughs> I have a party every month. You know, sometimes I'm just so dense. I just realized the other, just the other day, my daughter's family, her husband's birthday is in February. She's in March. My grandson's in April. My granddaughter's in May. How, how did I not catch on or realize that? I guess too busy, too busy to pay attention to the details. I'm trying to get in here and really get a nice uh, shadow. I got a little bit of glare fighting me here. I'm not ready to let my, that's what my sister says, Gail. She's not ready to let it go. I'll tell you what. I can't imagine what it costs her every three weeks. I'd be, I'd be wanting that money for art supplies. Just saying, just saying. Let's see if I can turn this just a little bit. I get a little bit of black in there. And that comes all the way down around this way. Called priorities, yeah. Oh my gosh, her hair grows like a weed. Yeah, every three weeks. But she looks like, I mean, and she needs to go. She looks like a skunk. She looks like a skunk if she doesn't go. Because her, her hair, she gets a color dark, like a really dark brown. She's always been a brunette. So that's what color she, you know, so 
it's not like a an easy transition. And it's stark. I mean, she whew, and she's short. So like if it's right before her hair appointment and I see her and we're sitting next to each other and drawing or coloring or whatever we're doing. And I look down at her. Oh, my goodness. I think I want to do purple. When I finally make my next appointment to go, my hair's gotten really long. I need to go. But don't tell her on. I did a dark purple one time, but it wasn't it wasn't purple enough. I want to I want to be I want to be like Lizzie, like Lizzie Brewer. Yeah, we had a miscommunication. So the purple she had bought for me originally, but it was nice. It was a nice deep purple, but I want that that bright in your face, that bright in your face stuff. I'd go somewhere else. It's just fun. And at my age, you know, why not? If I enjoy it, it grows out. It's not permanent. All right, I'm just filling in and trying to make this just a little more red. This is like a middle shade. This is the uh, crimson red. Now, most of us probably could. Oh, strawberry blonde is nice. Okay, Devin, thank you. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Brenda says she is very little gray, and her husband has beautiful silvery white. Yeah, my husband won't let his go. You're so vain. I bet you think this song is about you. Ooh. The last time we took my mom to her doctor, like in the office, there's a gal behind the, um, an older gal behind the counter and her hair is white, but she's got like cotton candy colors streaked through it. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. So cool. So cool. All right, let's find my, I'm going to sharpen my golden rod. I want to do a little bit of the beak, a little bit of the beak in close to the head. We've got the darker golden rod color. And then I picked up, um, see, this is what I do. This hurts your hand. This is the uh, Sienna Brown. Oh, I love Sienna Brown. I love Sienna Brown. I'm going to put a little bit of Sienna Brown back in here by his face. Really? Oh my gosh. My dad's mom wasn't, um, she was mostly gray. Not white. I forget what my nanny, I guess nanny was pretty white. Okay, let's see. I need a little bit of dark in here. Uh, 
remember when years ago it was like they would get their hair done gray or touched up and then it would turn blue or purple and it was like oh now i want to get my hair purple that's a little cray cray right oh my goodness 102 wow i don't know that's really old Okay, I want to stop fussing a little bit. All right, so up in here now, I'm going to start with my golden. Well, let's see. I've got, maybe I'll put a little white in spots. Now, see, I need to get a white right here, but I'm going to put that in, um, I know, a whole century. Yeah. Your dad's going to be 91. My mom just turned 92. Actually, this looks a little, that might be hard to do. I'd have to do that with a pencil. Let's try some of this. Mm, I don't know. This might be a little too yellow. This is the orange yellow. I just want to put a little, there's a little brightness in there around his eye and then around this red part of his face. See like right in here and then there's kind of like some highlights. I'm trying a little more pressure there to get. Keep your hair long enough to braid. In the summer, I like my hair longer because I can, with going to the pool, I can put it up in a in a clip or a ponytail, you know, under my little pool hat. But Now I'm using a little stronger pressure up by where the comb is and then lighter easing up a little bit on the pencil as I come down towards the head. And then I'm going to pick up my I don't want terracotta. What did I do with my there he is. With my sienna. Miriam has long white braids. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, let's put a little of this sienna up here by his head. And I'm going to scrub a little bit of that down his neck. And then these marks that I put in, I'm just going to put a little sienna kind of over in here. Just giving a little indication of feathers. Now, of course, this isn't realistic, right? I'm going, I'm going by, you know, a calendar picture. It's not a photograph. I think I can put my reds down. Let me get the reds out of my hand. I can get rid of that purple. Uh, let's keep this. So this orange might be nice. So what is this one here? Tuscan red, I don't think I want that either. All right, let's get some of this. Pam was able to get the microwave, good. Okay, 
So I'm just darkening the one side of where I've kind of got those put in that sienna brown. I have to put in that little white spot at some point. But right above it is that. Let's see if I, I got these. I think these work fairly well. At least they have in the past. They don't have a little shaky ball in them. By Flymax, a paint marker. A 0.7 millimeter fine point, which is not like the... Um, Posca, the one Posca I have is um, much finer. This is some kind of a cadmium orange. Just adding a little bit of that. Kind of warm up that yellow I have under there. I'm going as light and as light as I can. Uh-oh, Pam's going back to the thrift store. Hold on. Hold on to your bootstraps. I feel another haul coming. I love Pam's hauls. I love when she says, this was only $2, so why not? <laughs> Girl after my own heart, I love thrifting. I've cut way back. Gosh, I don't even know the last time I was to the thrift store. Okay. Now I'm trying to uh, create little streaks to indicate these um, <laughs> let's timer. You are kidding, Brenda. Brenda said she has a 93-year-old friend who only takes blood pressure medicine. Last Saturday, she got dehydrated and had to have IV fluids. Second hospitalization in her life. The first one was 61 when she was in and, had her, and her son was born. That's unbelievable. Sounds kind of like my one sister's... Um, maybe I should put some... I'm going back to the uh, golden rod to get underneath here. My sister's mother, my one sister's mother-in-law. Oh my goodness, she's 98. She had some kind of an episode when she was, I think, like 72. Okay, so like close to my age, where she collapsed. They had to call 911. They came, and um, of course, at this point, her hair was still her natural color. And the uh, EMT workers, you know, with the ambulance, kept asking her how old she was. And she'd say, I'm 72. And they'd say, okay, now we're going to ask you, do you know what today is? And she'd tell them the day. And then they'd say, okay, now how old are you? I'm 72. Because she looked like she was 60. And I think finally my sister, my brother-in-law said, yeah, that's her age. She's 72. And they're like, what? Now, where's that bright? I got this bright. Oh, where's my, I wonder if that'd be too green. Yeah, 
I was thinking about some chartreuse. And Marty said, I received five recipes for my friends of the trolley recipe journal. If you would like to contribute, please message me or send to me by email. Oh, that sounds cool, Marty. All right, let's here. Yeah, let's put some of this in here. Let's kind of like streak this. How am I on time? Okay, let's get some more. I'm not going to be as fiddly right here as I have been. I want to come down this way and start trying to pull in some feathery looking bits. See, my book is tipping because I have just a little dish underneath. My husband does a quick um, beefaroni recipe that's really good that you don't have to, um, you don't cook the noodles, you don't cook the macaroni, you just put it in the pot in 20 minutes. You serve that with a salad or a piece of crusty bread, ooh baby, ooh baby, ooh baby, it's really good, very quick. I need to get that cream. Here it is. Let me sharpen my cream. See if between that and my white, I can kind of keep that. I keep putting my white down. Now, over in this area, it's really brown, but I don't want to just keep, I don't want to go in real hard with the brown yet. So I'm just going to put in some of that. Um, goodness, I keep losing my little, there he is. He's getting short. Marty, you're trying all the different recipes people are sending you. That's cool. I need a recipe for sure. You know, unless it's like bacon and eggs. Then I, I can do that without a recipe. I don't trust myself. Okay, now I thought I had pulled out my did pull out I think the dark brown but I don't think I pulled out a brown now this here I'm trying to deepen the color in between these feathers down into this screen I'm kind of just making elephants too <laughs> okay Uh, 
Let's see, this brown might need a little sharpening. I'll let him out. I should have put my phone on so I could see how this, how he's looking. So as you've probably guessed, if you don't color, coloring is not for the faint of heart. takes time of course you can go quicker and try to get these little highlighted areas I think I want to come down in this area here, maybe try to get some green in. Let's see, what is it? It's 1121. Let's not forget Kathy Arbor is on this afternoon. So you don't want to miss her. I've got a lot more work in here to do to create some shadows and such. Did I pull any green? So yeah, I did. Let's see, I want to start with, um, I think I'm going to start with the moss green. Just real light blocking in some color here. My husband and my family, my sisters, we all went to the same high school. And we always talk about meals that we had at uh, the high school. There was always had had a spaghetti dinner, kind of that you would get for lunch. It was one of our favorites. Their spaghetti and the roll that they would serve, and the way they cut the roll, and a lot of they used a lot of butter. Oh my gosh, we're always talking about that. All right, so now what I want to do is with some of this green is I want to push my pencil up into the yellow to have that look like feathers. We'll see if it works. Let's see if I can get my chair scooted back here. Back up to my desk. I pushed myself too far away there. Let's see. Ba, ba, ba. Actually, I could use some this dark brown. I'm just kind of stroking and Pretty said we made a recipe book at school as a fundraiser. I was editor, page setter, and printer. Oh, see, well, that, that printing you were talking about. My helper got a job. Someone sent me an elephant stew recipe. Cut elephant into bite-sized pieces. This will take about four months. Cook over kerosene 525 degrees about five months. <laughs> I have to say, I've never heard of elephant stew. All right, I'm coming in with a little, little black to deepen that. See if we can get some. All right, now, what did I do with my, okay, here we go. Oops, that's too hard. I want to go easy. Easy. Add salt and pepper and cover with brown gravy. This will serve about 3,800 people. If more are expected, add two rabbits. That is hysterical.
All right, now let's get that dark green. <laughs> Elephant stew. Eh. I don't know if that, but you can see it kind of looks like I'm making some progress there with the with the feathers. Okay, let's see. I've got some really dark spots here. So I'm using the dark green over top of that moss. Kind of sketchy. Hey, Dana, good morning. Still morning, still morning. How you doing? Dana, you're, you're the one having renovations, right? You getting your kitchen done or something? How's that going? If I'm remembering, if I'm remembering correctly. Okay, let's see, let's get a little, it's real lightly with some black. Kind of deepen in that green, I'm trying to get that little feathery look in there on this chest. I've been wanting to do a rooster for a while. And one of my sketchbooks, I think it was um, when uh, Dee Dee was doing drawing a rooster. Man, her roosters are so cool. But it was just a quick, a quick sketch. I need to sharpen my dark brown. I missed something. Something about it's still sprinkling. Is that the weather? <laughs> That's a really sharp pencil. Just trying to create a little more shadow, darker areas in here. Just really kind of working in this area here. This is not done. Get the rubber boots out. <laughs> A lot of it is too just trying to decide what colors you want to use and um I've heard Dee Dee say this too. Same thing that Bonnie Snowden says, and and Kathy Arbor. Um, once you start to look at something and you really start to study it and look at it, you don't think you can see different colors. But once you get once you get doing that, 
you really can the colors start to pop out and you start to see what's really there and you know it's training your eye and your brain <laughs> teresa's got your back she's got you covered putting a little white on a couple of these areas to try to get that to pop now here where she's got where the artist has these little white patches i probably will do the dd the dd trick where she puts the posca or the paint pen you know down and then give it a little rub so it kind of makes it um just like a little cloudy little cloudy bit you know that just gives you a little bit of highlight but it's not like in your face okay thanks Joni have a great day may your pencil stay sharp and your sheavings stay in the bin oh my gosh before I came on and I opened up my tin of pencils ugh, it smells so good I think I'm going to try a little bit of this indigo blue. The side of that green. Try to get this feather here to kind of pop. And then come back over top of that. Marty says, see you later somewhere. She's starting to hear birds. So I just am layering the same colors I'm using over and over again. Try to get this little patchy look in here. And it doesn't have to be, this is, you know, my art journal. This isn't a commission piece or anything. You know what I'm saying? It's just like for fun, I'm doing this in my art journal. Good candy, that's good. No problemo. Let's see. Okay, there goes Marty. Okay, Marty. Thank you. Enjoy your elephant stew. How are we on time? You've got plenty of time. I just don't know that everybody's going to want to watch this for uh another hour so i'm thinking i might do something else i'm just trying to think what i got tons of stuff i want to do tons of stuff i pulled out some okay let's just see if this works like the posca does ow
Yeah, kind of. Kind of, sort of. I want to put a little highlight up here. That's good. Oh, yeah, she came back, Shaz, and she was here for a while, and then she had to scoot. Devin had to scoot, but she was she was back after saying bye to her hubby. I don't know. Can you guys see that at all? So you can see there's a lot still to do. But I kind of like this kind of background, but I don't know that I'll do that. I was thinking about some Harlequin, like a stamp. But goodness me, I've got so much more left to do. This was a big undertaking for today. But this is just what I had in my mind. So I think that's enough for that for, for today. I don't want to bore you to tears. And then I was thinking I would show you what I'm doing in my little, this is a little ashtray that my grandmother had in her home for years. I put little, little bits in it. Little bits. More little bits. I'm having, does anybody here tat? Do any tatting? I'm teaching myself to tat and I'm having... I'm having a struggle. I'm struggling with my tatting, I have to say. When I pick, it, pick out a tatting pattern, I think it looks um, easy. But then once I get, get going, after the initial... Um, ring, get my ring started. Oh, my gosh. I can't connect it right. Okay, so this is the little book that came in a leather journal. Kind of, I guess, like a Midori style. They had the elastic bands. And so the other day, I was putting paint on my jelly plate. And then this is some of the foundry wax. So I thought I'd like to come in here. Pam says the new style of Barbie dolls are horrible. Uh, my granddaughter really, she has a couple. My daughter never liked them. So I have some of those sticker books. Look, these stickers do not stick. Okay. I've got three sticker, three of those sticker books. I have them over there. I can pull them out and show you. So I was looking for something inside the cover of my little book here. Oh, let me show you. Let me show you this. Let me put some of this. This is um. This is Mod Podge, not Mod Podge. This is um. I think Golden Matte Medium in here. So then I did this on the jelly plate, and then I got happy mail from Beth. Thank you, Beth, if you are lurking or if you happen to watch the replay. She had this washi tape on the outside of the envelope. How cute is that washi tape? Okay. And then she sent me an adorable little napkin and a piece of Braille. So that was very nice of her. So I just started to stick down some stuff from these sticker books that I have. That I never use. Never ever use. I forget I have them. And when I have used them, they don't stick. Now these guys are sticking okay, but this wasn't sticking. <sighs> so, note to self add glue. As most of you have realized, I am very easily enabled. And so I got that. These, this is over a course of several years. 
this. And then I got this one. And I'm pretty sure I wasn't able to get this one by Kay Berg and Colleen. And the other two, I think, was a combo of Kay Berg and Colleen and Dee Dee Willingham. Okay. So I picked a couple of things out. But I wanted some kind of words. I didn't really see words so much in these. And then I forgot I had these. I think these are stickers. Oh, this might just be cut them out and glue. I'm looking for some words or something to put on that little page. Because the words are still in the sticker book. It's not it's not the sticker part. It's the um Oh, this is um, cool stuff. It's, oh, look at that. It's um, the backing page. It's not really the sticker. I know, right, Shaz? It's a whole lot of stickers for sure. Look, here's some, some loose stuff. I'm still not finding what I'm wanting. Maybe I don't know what I want. What about Timmy Small Talk? Janice Glein. Hello. I don't have it. I'm not, I I was enabled by Timmy to buy a, a stamp the other day. I don't need I don't need it. Yes. Uh, I don't need it. I don't even know what they are now. I'm gonna have to look. I don't know what they are. I guess I could stamp. I could put some. I could put that there, and then I could maybe stamp something. So I thought it might be fun. Judy says, "Lori, I'm jealous. I don't have any sticker books. I sold Dee Dee when she bought the books too and was envious." Yeah, but you know what? I got to tell you, Judy. I'm not. I mean, I don't collage and do as much. Of that stuff like Dee Dee does. And I really don't use them. I mean they're nice to have when you want to use them. But I think you could find something that would um, serve you just as well. But not a big old stinking book like that. Like if you go on, an, on Amazon... See, these were very inexpensive. I put these in my Amazon cart, and one of my kids, I think, got me these one Christmas. Now, of course, these aren't stickers, but let's face it, the stickers in those books, they don't stay down. And you got to add glue anyway. Of course, a sticker, you don't have to cut them. You just peel it off. If you want to trim them, you can trim them. But what I'm saying is there are other options. Like you can buy these little kits and they come in little bags. You can get them on Amazon. Let me show you. Hold on. Hold the phone. I think I know where they are. Uh -oh, I had them in a shoe box kind of thing. And yeah, yeah. Hold on. Let me think. And they come in different, um, I'll say genres. All right. I just have to unearth the uh, the shoe box are in here. And I think I think if you buy something like this, it's a lot less money than the sticker books. And I th I think for me anyway. I would recommend you get this and you would get a lot more use out of it. I'm trying to use 
more of my stickers. See, when I was watching Lisa and uh, Lisa Conway, my Lisa, my eclectic life, and Diane Fago, and they have these little books with little collages in it, and they can hardly close them, and they're, I just love them. So I want to replicate that. Not even the pictures of, or what they're designing, but <clears throat> that, that little book with all the little goodies in it. All right, so let me see if I can find one of these. I don't know that the name's still on them. Okay, here we go. I got these off of Amazon. Just an idea. Paper Crafter UK Magazine has tons of did you stamps, etc. Oh, that's a good tip. Thank you, Shaz. I don't know if I'm saying your name right, Shaz. Lori and everyone have to go. Okay, Gail. Okay, good luck. It might be a good laugh. Maybe not initially, but after. <laughs> okay, so this is called Deco Paper. I got them on Amazon. And, of course, a lot of it's missing because I've used it. And they have all different ones. Like this one, I think, was flowers. I forget where it's at. Of course, you know, it's in a foreign. Uh, that just stuck to the bag. But see, you can tear all this stuff. These aren't stickers. But these are nice sheets of paper nice coloring and you get several you get all different stuff in the packs some might be bugs some were um you know like the um artist artists you know like that would be in the louvre some of it was like library some of it was i think retro they had all different choices and then you might get something like this inside and then there's different sizes. Now these are different. And then you'll get a couple of, now these are stickers. These are like, a, not well, maybe they're kind of like a vellum. Kathleen said you can find some great stuff on the... NYP. Oh, right. Gail's got surgery coming up. So she's get, getting her husband in training. So she doesn't have to worry about getting their groceries in and stuff. See, so you get all, you get all kinds of stuff like that. For my taste and what I like to use, this is much more usable stuff. So it just depends on the pack that you you know you might order, but it sh sh it shows you pictures. Now most of this stuff you have to add glue. And then I got in another package of stuff where it had these little tablets. You get thousands and thousands of them. Some of them are Velcro and some of them are just regular little pieces of paper that you can use for ephemera. But those little plastic bag thingies that have all this stuff in it are great. And like I said, the sticker books, you're going to have to add glue. Oh, New York Public Library. Cool. Are you in New York, Kathleen? Yeah, I probably issued that before. You're not too far from me. Well, it depends where in New York, I should say. I'm not too far from New York City. Oh, that's from that ephemera book. But these were, if I'm if I'm remembering, these were like seven or eight dollars. Where the book is like, and these are sizes that I I mostly would use. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of what's in those sticker books, like I I'm, I hate the, the sticker books are beautiful. Okay. They are. I mean, there's no denying that. And they're nice to have. But well, let me just show you. This, for the most part, is 
is the size that I would be using. These, a lot of the sticker books, at least the ones that I have. Okay, I love the in-between pages. I'm not, you know, these are too big. Most of these are too big. I know you can cut them, but a lot of them are too big. Or it's like crazy stuff I'll never use. Yeah, but you might even find something like that in your dollar store, Judy. You know what I'm saying? Judy, I got tons. I'll hook you up. I think I still have your address. Yes, you're in Queens? Oh, cool. Yeah, you're only a couple hours from me. Okay, now if you have an imagination like Diane Fago, yeah, you're going to use probably a lot more of this stuff than I would for Didi. But some of it. Okay, so now I, I used this for today on the inside cover of my little my little thing here. Right? Look, I've already had to I don't know, maybe they're designed that way. I don't really want it coming back up. Yeah, use the ones you can. But see, then you forget. If you don't keep your book out, at least for me, if you don't keep your book out, you forget you have the blasted things. I don't know. I'm just saying. I think there's a better way to go than maybe. I'm trying to make you feel better if you don't have the book. Don't whine and and feel bad because you don't have the book. Although the pages are really slippery and feel nice. But look at the size of them flowers for the most part, right? I don't know. And if you like the... Um, Kathy D, did I miss Kathy D coming in? Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. There she is. This guy, his book is cool too. See, I would like to peel that off and use that. Is that one a sticker? Oh, that one is a sticker. One of the, oh, look at the Eiffel Tower. Oh, I got to put that. But see, I don't think that's a sticker. That's an in-between page. Look at the size of that baby. You need a big book for that. Hey, Kimberly. Did I say hi to Kimberly? I think I did. Didi said she will collage on the backs of... Yeah, but there's... You know what? They're slick. And at this point, this book's never going to be empty for me because I don't... This is a lot of stickers. And like, if I wanted to take some pages out, I'd have to take the whole page. Like, it is stitched. See, okay, so this is a sticker on this side. But I'd like to use this. But I don't want to rip that out of my book. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Am I glad I have them? Of course I am. Could I live without them? Yes. I could. Now these are cool because... Well, now see, that's got the white. I'm not always crazy about that white. Edge. You can trim that out. Right, Kathy, they're very, some, most of them are very large stickers. Now, see, I would like to use the dogs. I would be more apt to use the dogs, but that's not a sticker. I can't tell you the last time I was to a Dollar Tree or Dollar Store. But I'm going to write that down because I'm going to send Judy some of this loose stuff I have. You know? 
And guys, keep this in mind. Like, I, you know, put stuff on a wish list for Christmas. I put it in my Amazon cart and my kids look at it, right? Um, and not everybody, not everybody is able to do that. I understand that. But amongst us, you know, when you're, when you get a gift or you see something like this and you make a purchase or you have this, I am not going to use all of this. And I know not everybody's financial, um, situation is the same and I know stamps have gone up but an envelope with some of this in it's just a few pieces but we all have different stuff and most of us have more than we will ever use so it's just a way to bless someone else and I to send happy mail the blessing is me it is gives me a blessing too you know what I'm saying like for what is it now 63 cents for a stamp you know you, you can instead of it sitting in a drawer but I don't like to send things to people if it's stuff they already have so I you know if some if you want to send me a private message and say hey I could use a few of those whatever you were you might not get them right away because my budget has changed too but I'd be happy to send some of this jazz out you know what I'm saying so I'm trying to teach myself certain people have a certain look and a certain style for their art and what they do. Diane Fago is one. She was Packard Die years ago. Now she's Diane Fago Art, I think. But there are other girls that, you know, okay, to me, I'm just going to be honest here with you. To me, in our art circle that many of us travel in, for some of us, there are, there are some that, I don't know, they're like rock stars, okay? To me, Dee Dee Willingham is one. Murray is another. Shannon Green. I don't know Shannon. I tease and say she's my best friend. I wish. You know, so there's people that we watch. They've got a lot of videos. They've, they've got a lot. Devin Rex, she's becoming one of those, okay? Um, very talented people for the most part they appear to be very humble people down to earth people but they've got their own style and they teach us a lot of stuff right so i'm trying to learn some of those different styles and diane i just i don't, don't know how her brain works to put stuff together but part of the sticker thing for me is I don't know what to have to do with them. So I'm trying to use them more and I'm trying to use things that are bigger. Now, see this little book, I used it to put notes and stuff in. And when I did the cover, I liked this side better than the other side. So now the book is upside down. But I don't care because I'm going to be covering that up. So I'm going to cover that up right now. Oh, you watched it already? I saw it pop up, Judy, but I didn't watch it yet. Now look at these, look at these big boys. They're humongous. And I don't think they're stickers. Oh yeah, I lied. They're stickers. The other side's not. But that's got to go in a regular size journal. So I'm looking for, ooh, that's pretty. I'm looking for something that's oversized for this page. I saw one thing. Oh, look at that. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's cool. I'm not showing you. I'm saying stuff is cool. Look, I like that globe. That's a sticker, but that's that's way big. See, and then after I would cut it, you could cut it, right? OK. 
Kathleen said, I do use Shannon and Jason are wonderful people. I don't know who Jason is. Which doesn't matter. Oh, here we go. Maybe something like this. This is a sticker. This is a sticker. Oh, it's a door. Okay, now I don't want to cover up total my um, background that I, you know, I didn't work hard to put the backgrounds down, but I do like the background. So I'm going to put my door sticker here. And I don't know if this is going to pop up, but I'll deal with that if it pops up. So that's kind of cool. All right, so I'll put that down. Now I'm just looking for crazy stuff to add add to that page. Look how pretty that. I mean, they are pretty. Glue it. Janet says glue it, glue it. Yeah, I should. Look at that. See some of the some of this one I can't tell which one are stickers and which one is you know the other side. Now a couple of these you know like this style it's got those crazy pages like this so you can tell that's that's not the sticker side. Oh that's cute. Do, do, do. I'm looking for something bizarre to put next to the door. Shannon Green. Oh, Jason Green is Shannon's husband. He was in some of her. Oh, was he? Oh, okay. I know. Sometimes he'll come in and say something, and then she <laughs> she says something back to him, and it's it's very funny. They're very funny. Oh, they're kind of cool. See, it takes me forever to decide. See, this is not, some things come easy to me and other things, like all of us, we all have our thing, right? Oh, that's kind of cool. Where's my little... Oh, there's a little dragonfly. Mm. Oh, I like that. Just stick that down. I think it's at some point I might just try, you know, opening an opening a page and picking something up and just sticking it down. See, I think on this one I might like to cut this white stuff out. How's my time? Okay, 12. I can still yap for a little while. Kathy. Arbor is coming on at one. One Eastern. Do most of you mind the white trim or doesn't bother you or take it or I'm going to chop that little part off the bottom there. Take it or leave it at times. Like, would you bother to cut this out? Like I'm doing. You don't like it? Yeah, I think for the most part, I don't either, Colleen. It's like oh, when I'm you almost always trim them, Janice. Yeah. I was watching Diane Fago trimming stuff out like in magazines. And she's left handed, I think. I think she maybe she's not. I know I know Lisa is. She was going a humming around that stuff, man, cutting cutting stuff out. Yeah, I don't generally mind. It just depends on sometimes my hand, my hand gives out. 
So this is the botanical one. So that makes sense. It's got mostly, you know, botanical stuff in it. I have no idea why I have these post-it notes sticking out of this book. None. Clueless. Clueless. Oh, he might be nice. Let's see. Let's see if he how he would look standing by the door. It reminds me of a Harry Potter. Harry Potter. And sometimes I think I need more than I do. That's one thing that when Lisa and Diane get working, sometimes less is more. You know, you don't need all that stuff. See, now I could leave this, I guess, and tear out the whole page. But I don't know how I want to use the book after it's empty. I mean, who am I kidding? I'm going to be like... 112 if I don't share this with anybody by the time I use all these stickers. Yes, Potter. I could go for a Harry Potter movie. I haven't watched one in a while. They're kind of bittersweet for me because my bonus son and I used to watch them. And then I, I already miss them. And then I miss them more when I'm watching Harry Potter. Brenda likes the vulture. Yeah, I forget what book it was in. I don't know if it's in this one or not. Yeah, I saw him too. Um, and then doodling. Then Diane doodles around some of her stuff. Oh, she comes up with these clever ideas. Uh, but there again, the more you do it and the more you practice, right, more ideas will come to you. I mean, ideas not going to come to you if you don't do it, if you don't sit around. And, and as long as you enjoy what you're doing, just have at it. See, I don't have much in the way of magazines. That's why that's why I bought some calendars. And I never plan ahead to go to that calendar sale. I don't even know if all um, all of the books a million does that or not. There's one that I could get to, but it's it's um it's a little bit of a drive, I think, like an hour or so. Now, this one's not too bad because the, the edging around this one is gray, not white, so it doesn't stand in your face. Judy says, movies and popcorn and hot apple cider in the evening. Threw blankets on the floor and watched with my nephew and your son. Aww. Yeah, I get to a point where I have to watch another Harry Potter. I just, in fact, they should be here today. I've got a couple of books from Thrift Books. And one is called, I hope it's not in too bad a shape because I want to give it to my granddaughter. One is called The White Horse or The White Stallion. I think it's The White Horse. And it's got a horn. The White Horse has got a horn on it, like a unicorn. She loves unicorns. But it's written by J.K. Rawlings. And I think she didn't, I think she'll uh, enjoy it. My granddaughter is quite the reader. And um, she reads beyond her grade level. So I think she'll enjoy it. It's, it's, um, it's a little fiddly cut in stickers. Because they stick. So 
So I've been getting some projects done, which I'm very excited about. I've got a couple more journals finished off. I'm okay. Who here has, well, Pam probably does knowledge and uses Velcro. These scissors are kind of big for this. I have those little tiny Velcro dots, you know, that you can use um, to put on a little like mini journal. Like they're little tiny, little teeny tiny dots, but I can't get them to stick down. And even with the glue, uh, the Fabri-Tac, it's not holding it down and it's a closure. If I put a little stitch through that, just so it doesn't come off, do you think there still be enough grip for the for the Velcro to work? I mean, they're mini. Here, I'll show you. See how little they are? So I'm thinking if I put a stitch in there, it's going to take up some of the some of the surface area, and it won't stick. See, they're little. Okay, what does Brenda say about turkey buzzers and brown buzzers? We have had some darker, we've had some darker one people calling black-headed buzzers move in. And they're aggressive. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I'll have to try it. Because I don't want, I don't want it to pull off, you know. I want it to, it's not a, a big, uh. It's not, a, it doesn't have to hold anything real heavy duty. I think I'm going to let that little bit go that's between his shoes. And I think overlapping is probably something I need to practice. Now. I kind of like that. I guess the thing is, is if you have these books, to just get them out and start flipping through. Ooh, I like this. Is that a... I just start sticking stuff down. How cute that little mushroom is. So Devin Rex and I are color buddies. So if you haven't seen it, we just posted our our most recent project on Instagram. So if you haven't checked that out, we would appreciate it if you did. You have donkeys? Oh my gosh, Brenda. A neighbor had to put aw. Oh that's terrible. Oh my goodness. Well, we've got big buzzard looking birds here in Jersey and when our little Maltese was still alive, she was only seven pounds. I always watched and went out with her because after watching that movie, The Proposal, I'm thinking, geez, one of those birds could come down and take my dog. Now, Bella's a little bigger. Bella's about 18 pounds now. Uh, I'm going to put that one on the door. I'm going to put another mushroom over here. I'm just trying to 
if I was going to doodle around on this page, I'm just, just wondering what kind of a doodle I could do. Donkeys are great guards. They chase the deer out of the pastures. Your feet is lagging. I like a room under the stairs. Like, yes. To lock myself in occasionally. Read, snooze, craft, snooze. <laughs> yeah. Have a few snacks. Or how about going up for the up through the flu. I'm getting somewhere you want to be. We're going through the wall at nine and three quarters. Platform nine and three quarters. What an imagination, huh? Years ago, uh, my friend Joyce and I, Joyce is like a sister to me. She uh, started watching um, different things online like she could watch an eagle's nest and then she started to watch these dogs in Maryland I think they were Labradors and then she found a lady in Massachusetts who raised Great Danes and I'll never forget this I don't know what year it was but it was time for the um, Academy Awards or something. Some big show. And uh, I'm like, are you going to watch? Because back then, I would watch occasionally. She watched all the time. She said, no, I'm watching Great Danes being born. <laughs> I'm like, you're, you're a what? She said, there's a litter of Great Danes being born. So I tuned in and sure enough, the Great Danes were being born. They were, it was unbelievable. So she got more and more invested in watching these Great Danes. They had like a puppy cam set up all the time and then they would have um, one set up where the puppies sleeped and then there was a camera out where the puppies were out in the yard to play and they had the nursery you know all different things like that but so we were we were like watching all the time Joyce was watching more than than I was watching and it was getting about time for Joyce to uh, have a birthday and I said to my sisters what can we do for Joyce and um, I said, let's plan a trip up to this farm in Massachusetts to see these Great Danes. Well, as it turned out, when we were able to go, no one else could go but me and Joyce. So just the two of us went. Oh, my gosh, what an experience. We went two or three times after that. The dogs were magnificent. And uh, we were able to go a couple times when they had litters. And our job, I mean, sometimes we'd have to, you know, pick up poop. But it was a like a farm. Not a farm farm, but she, the lady, um, Carlene, had quite a bit of um, property. They had a couple of horses that our, our daughter kept in the stables there. And at any given time, she might have as many as 40, 30 to 40 Danes. And uh, our job most times was just to sit in the puppy room and watch the puppies. And then we would get to feed them. I got to mix their food. Oh, thank you, Kelly. I mean, you're not Kelly. I keep seeing Kelly. Kathleen. Thanks, Kathleen. Thanks for checking it out. It was a fun piece. And um, we would sit and snuggle with the puppies. And then I got to mix their food. We met all kinds of interesting people. And then every Sunday, the farm was open and visitors come in. And she had like an open pit 
fireplace and they would roast hot dogs and they had all different kinds of special events and stuff. All this to say, when we first started to go, they had a donkey and her name was Mary. <sighs> Mary was always into everything. Mary would follow the, uh, the owner would fly around the property. Judy said if flu powder really existed, we wouldn't use our cards or planes or trains nearly. Right. And, and you know what, Judy? Then we could visit each other real easy too, right? Just grab a handful of flu powder. So Mary would be behind the, be behind the golf cart. And uh, the owner, Carlene, a lot of times she'd have a bag of carrots in the back of the golf cart. Well, Mary wasn't stupid. She knew she had carrots back there, right? <laughs> she was always trying to steal the carrots. And then you'd see her shaking her little head. Like, Mary, what have you gotten? She'd be stealing the carrots out of the back of the golf cart. I don't know how many times she got the plastic carrot bag yanked out of her mouth. She was always breaking into cabinets. But she had free reign of the farm. Except, oh, there's the buzzard, except for at night. You know, she'd be in the barn. Everybody loved Mary. But I had never been exposed to a donkey before, let alone Great Danes. Never a, this is my Timmy. I'm going to just put a little bit of my Timmy crayon here. And then once I'm done this, guys, I'm going to say toodaloo. Go get some lunch. And then on to the next project. So let's see, how are we here on time? Yeah, 12.22 Eastern. And from what I understand, they've had a couple of more donkeys since Mary, Mary has since passed away. Okay, Janice, thanks for coming. Nice to see you. Okay, let's put a little bit down here. All right, so, gosh, it's Thursday. Can you believe it's March 2nd? March 2nd. My daughter will be 38 at the end of the month. Oh, how'd that happen? So that's quite green, but I do like it. <laughs> so let's see. See if my brain can kick in. It's not APG Jamie Thursday because it's only the first Thursday of the month. And Kathy Arbor will be on at 1 Eastern. Beth Schuler will be on this evening. Um there'll be some other gals that are, that are going to pop in uh this evening and i don't know that they some of the girls have uh, a schedule schedule thank you kimberly and um then friday morning usually mary is on and um carol canadian artisan comes on your brother will be 64 on march 8th happy birthday judy's brother Colleen's the 26th. My Colleen is the 26th. 38. Can't believe it. She was arguing with her, not argue, arguing with my sister um, about how old I was and that I was going to be 69 this year. And my sister said, no, she's going to be 70. And Colleen said, no, she's going to be 69. And my sister said, she's four years older than me. She's always been four years older than me. I know she's going to be 70. And Colleen said, no, Aunt Nancy, because 
I, I know that she's, I forget what Colleen said. I know that when I turn 30, when I'm 37, mom's going to be 69. And my sister looked at my daughter and said, sweetheart, you're going to be 38. <laughs> She's like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, so what happens to the young? So we take heart in that. All right. That's it for me. So I did my little, my not so little rooster that I've got started. I'm going to have fun working on this. Let's see, where do we put them? Let's see where we, there he is. Well, they look at least like they could be related, right? So when I get him finished up, I'll post it on Instagram. So yeah, I think I, I might feel like working on him a little. Today is your brother's birthday, Kathleen. Happy birthday to Kathleen's brother. Cool. All right, kids. I'm checking out. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your day. And don't forget, take time to be creative and enjoy the journey. And I hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.